And welcome back. Well, did you know you are 23 times more likely to be in a car crash if you're texting while driving? That's true, even with compelling statistics, though. Some people feel like they can safely text and drive. Yeah, this book, though, A Deadly Wandering by Matt Richtel, explores motivations about why we need to stay connected and multitask behind the wheel. Both not a good idea. Joining us to discuss the book is Ann Scallon. She's the founder, publisher, and editor of Before the Wheel. It's an online resource for safe teen driving. Great to see you. Yeah, good to have you here. Great to see both so of you. So this book is based on a true story? Mm -hmm. It's based on a true story. And it, uh, no matter what perspective you're coming from regarding the texting issue, it will pull you in and engage you because it, it goes through the thorough of everyone involved, prosecutors, lawyers, victims, advocates, um, victims themselves who have been hurt, and drivers. Mm -hmm. Are there really other sides to the issue? I mean, I think at this point, we, we all have to agree, uh, agree that you, you should not ever text and drive. Are there still some people who think, I can do it? I would say so, because when you're driving down the road and you look over and it's, it's alarming how many people are texting and driving. And I think a lot of it has to do with that empowerment, you know, decades of you can do anything mm. type of philosophy, our brains are limitless, but that's kind of more motivational type of thinking. Uh, the book outlines several scientists that show us that you cannot do too big cognitive functions at the same time. Well, mm -hmm. and I think that part of it is fascinating. We'll get to that in one second, but just tell us the setup in this story, kind of what happens, because I think what's interesting about it is that there's not sort of this awareness or this acceptance the the, the, the main character lives in denial for quite a while. Right. For, for two years, he denies. He, um, he actually hits two rocket scientists on the road, and their car spins around. And is he a teenager? The he driver. was 19. He was, he was 19. 19 at the time. He hits two ro rocket scientists. Their car and kills spins them. and gets hit by a much heavier vehicle, mm -hmm. and they are killed instantly. And and what what happens? He's kind of like I wasn't texting and driving. Right, and it's 2006, and there's not much information to say this is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And he completely, but he's not denying it, lying. He doesn't realize he was texting. Interesting. Because he doesn't remember or why? Yeah, he just blacked out like the whole thing. Huh. And two years of hounding and presenting and presenting the, the factual evidence that he was texting made no, no dent. It was just about to go to trial and one of the scientists was explaining what happens with our attention and that's when it clicked and he's like, I did this and it never mm. went to trial. They came up with a plea agreement. Wow. So this is a true story, but you told us during the break, it reads like a, a novel. You recommend this to teens, to parents, to who? Everyone, everyone. It will completely change your entire perspective because it explores how it affects every single person involved. Mm -hmm. From the spouses of those rocket the scientists? The spouses, the children. The gentleman who actually made the mistake is the one most affected mm -hmm. and really most harmed. Mm -hmm. That's... An interesting point, mm -hmm. um, I think, to make. Let's talk just about the science behind attention prioritizing mm -hmm. and the addiction of technology. Okay, they, they do have several scientists, so there's like two different ca categories. So the addiction kind of comes with that feeling that nowadays we want to always stay connected. If well, you, right, can you hear the ding? <laughs> you got to read it. Yeah, right. exactly. Fifteen years ago, weren't you happy to go read the paper and then you're happy to look at the news at 5.30 p.m.? It just doesn't work that way anymore. So we want to keep up. I'll have read something and then half an hour later I want to know the update, even though there's not really an update, mm -hmm. but we keep thinking. So that's the addiction part of it. We feel like we need to keep up with everything. We need to keep in touch with everybody. We need to know everything that's going on. And then the attention part of it comes from the fact that they did, you know, an enormous amount of studies and our brains selectively prioritize. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're looking at a text or writing a text. You're thinking about the next question you might ask or the next question they might ask. Can you meet at seven? Well, okay, if I can't meet at seven at that place, what you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're just pushing out all of the information that's going on in the driving. 
and it takes one of the things that they found that it takes 10 to 15 seconds to reorient reorient yourself to the awareness of your surroundings after writing a text is that true that's true and one of the one scientist said the 10 to 15 later in the book another science says 15 seconds plus hmm. so you've looked away your brain is thinking about something else you have to re-familiarize yourself. You have to get an idea of, because in traffic, yeah. things change so fast. Like seconds. Right, you know? mm -hmm. exactly. And this is reading or writing a text that it takes you that long to reorient yourself. And we've seen all those commercials where it's like a split second or it's two mm -hmm. seconds. Right. You look down, you just glance. And we've all been there in traffic. When you glance down and you look up and someone stopped in ahead of you. Right, I, I exactly. think every driver at some period experiences that whether you've got a phone in the car or not, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. so quick. Mm -hmm. Right. Or talking on the phone, too. Because I used to yes. think that was okay because I've got my eyes on the road, mm -hmm. I'm still aware. Uh, but I know we've talked about that. Your attention is still diverted and you're still prioritizing in your mind. Yes, and one of the scientists actually in the book exactly says, I'd rather have you have your hands off the wheel than have your mind somewhere else. No How scary way. is that? And some are comparing or making it, you know, drinking under the influence of alcohol or drugs right. is almost, or texting can almost be as bad or worse than mm -hmm. that. And Which, that was one of the, the comparisons they were using in, in the trial period, I think or the, the pre-trial. I think the big question here, and we don't have time to talk about it now, is how we can take the information from this book and what we've learned and the impact it has and influence our, our teen drivers, influencing, influencing ourselves as drivers, influence, influencing the people we love and the right. people around us. So I hope that you'll come back and talk. That could be a whole show yeah. right, right there. Exactly. Um, I know you updated your newsletter. Um, you can find great information. It's a wonderful resource, especially if you've got a young driver in the house, but it's good for all of us. Go to beforethewheel.com to read Anne's fantastic newsletter. I'm so excited that you're part of the show because yeah. I've learned so much important <laughs> stuff from you. <laughs>